Hey guys, it's Ben here from the Strength Factory and today we're talking protein shakes. Do you need it? Do they work? Will it let you ride your bike faster? And if so, how do you choose when there's so many on the market? The sports nutrition and in particular the protein market is huge and there are literally thousands of products all promising to make you leaner, bigger, stronger, faster and just a more badass human being. But do they really do that? Can a protein shake make you really big? Is it healthy? Is it gonna help you ride your bike faster? That's what we're gonna get into now. So first of all, I mean, it's confusing. These are a whole load of products that I have used or that I do use, okay? And if I just take you through them, we can start to understand there's different sort of choices that you're gonna be dealing with. From the side here, this is like a, they call it a meal replacement. It's fuel, okay? Not recovery. They call it fuel and it's protein, carbs, vitamins, all that. Again, a recovery drink here from Torque. And again, this is whey protein, but with carbohydrate. Then if you go to the local supermarket, 20 grams of protein, happy days. Beef collagen, okay, potentially other benefits as well as just the protein. Whey protein, just whey, all on its own in a chocolate flavor. Then on the end here, mass gainer okay which again probably doesn't relate to most of you and what you're looking for but protein carbs loads of other goodies in there as well and they're all broadly a fairly similar product just with slightly different angles slightly different marketing and target markets and some are going to be better at some things than others what's the big deal with protein then well it's one of the three macronutrients so you've got fat carbohydrate which are primarily fuel sources and then protein is the third one and whilst it can be used for fuel primarily what we're worried about is its use for basically rebuilding and building your body and your muscle tissues in particular it's really important to get enough protein in your diet for general health and if you're an active person to make sure that you do recover and that you actually make progress in your training a really good guideline for how much protein to eat would be to have two grams of protein per kilogram of body weight every single day. It's going to vary a little bit from person to person, but if most people aim for that, you're going to be in the right ballpark. And that takes me to my first point. We had all those different products here, all selling you a certain thing about recovery and this, that and the other. But the most important thing, the most important thing, I'll say it twice, is that you get enough protein in a 24 hour period. The science is really clear that that is the take home. Hit that protein target day after day after day, week after week, month after month, and you're all good. The question is then, how do we get to that target? And are protein shakes and protein supplements a useful way of getting there? Each day then, we're aiming to hit that two grams per kilo. So for me, 80 kilos, I need about 160 grams a day. And actually, the vast majority is gonna come from food. This is part of my packed lunch today. We've got a uh, very nice venison uh, burger here, probably about 18 to 20 grams of protein. And then there's a bit of extra protein in the rice. And I actually had two burgers, I had some earlier. And so straight away there at lunch, you know, probably hitting 50 grams of protein with the rice as well. For breakfast, I had eggs on toast. Again, probably hitting about 25 to 30 grams of protein. And basically you need to work through the day and figure out how much you're eating. Now, where does a protein shake or supplement come into the mix? Well, first of all, convenience. This was effort. Last night, I cooked extra rice and veggies at dinner, and I cooked these burgers specifically to have for lunch for the next day or two. It takes time, it takes effort, and also maybe a little more expensive. Something like a protein shake, what it primarily offers is convenience, because I can keep this at the gym, bring in a shaker, just add water, shake it up, bang. I'll get a load of protein to add to my daily protein requirement. So that's the first thing I'd say is that it's, you know, a protein shake isn't some mystical thing that suddenly makes you strong. It's just a relatively cheap and highly convenient and portable way of increasing your daily protein intake. What we need to understand now is that actually in this world in particular, there's a lot of marketing nonsense, okay? And something like this with the picture and the name, Mass Gainer. Get some today and say it with me. Bacon! 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 Isn't really marketed at people who do endurance sports like mountain biking. It's more, you know, gym bros, bodybuilder. There's nothing wrong with that. 
Similarly here, this would be more of an all-round protein supplement, okay? Whereas this has got carbohydrates, it's got uh, creatine in it, and all the other good stuff. And so what we get here, though, is with this marketing and what it's trying to achieve is 46 grams of protein per serving, whereas this has only got 24 grams per serving. So you're immediately thinking, well, I need to hit my protein target. I need to have this. But the whole serving thing is nonsense because I can have 46 uh, grams of that. I just have two scoops. Similarly, I can have 20 grams of protein by having fewer scoops of this one. Okay, it's just this simple thing where any of these, you know, this is a fixed amount. That's 21 grams unless I drink half of it or unless I have two. Okay, so people get drawn into this uh, serving size. Generally, you'll see lower protein amounts and, and therefore calorie amounts in things marketed towards women and towards fat loss. It'll say 15 grams of protein, less than 100 calories or something like that, which might be fine for you, but that might not be enough especially if you're an adult male, 80, 90 kilos, and you're active. You might need to have one and a half scoops of this and hit 30 grams. Or you might want to use a product like this that helps you get a lot of calories in as well. It's going to help you grow, okay? So don't worry about this whole serving size thing. It's just marketing nonsense. The bottom line is that whey protein has a certain amount of protein per volume, okay, per scoop. And if you want more, you just have more scoops. It's as simple as that. Let's talk about recovery, post-exercise, and post-training. There's two things that we need to do, really. Number one is to get adequate protein in to repair the damage to the muscles so that you actually adapt and get stronger. And the second thing is to replace the energy you've used in the form of carbohydrate calories, okay? So ideally, if we've been for a big ride, in particular, where you've burned a lot of calories, we want a carbohydrate and protein mix. Typically, these are in the ratio of three to one, or four to one uh, carbohydrate to protein, okay? So if there's 20 grams of protein, maybe there'll be 60 grams of carbs. Similarly, if we've been training in the gym, and you know, it's been 45 minutes to an hour, uh, maybe you haven't burned anywhere near that number of calories, okay? And actually the main focus is on getting that protein in, and you can get calories from your food later in the day. And so then that straight away now, this helps you to choose the correct um, tool for the job. So after a big ride, big training ride, or really hard interval session, I'd use a product like Talk Recovery. This is what I use, not endorsed, I just really rate it. Um, and this has got protein and fast absorbing carbohydrate, so that after your training session, you can get a few scoops of this in. Again, you can have two scoops, three scoops, four scoops, five scoops, all depending on how big you are and how long you've been riding for and what your goals are. And it's gonna give you, you know, all the amino acids and the protein that you need, as well as quickly absorbed carbohydrate to help you recover as quick as possible. Typically, after a gym session, I just use a straight whey protein without any added carbohydrate. Something like this is absolutely fine. It's really, you can buy this in the supermarket, I get it on Amazon, and it just does exactly what I need it to. It's gonna give me 20 to 30 grams of protein, and then I'll get some carbs from a cereal bar or some fruit after I've had this. Okay, let's look at a couple of uh, slightly more random products, okay? Starting off with meal replacement, okay? You might have heard of things like Huel and things like that. It's probably the market leader. Um, but all the protein brands have some sort of meal replacement. And it's a really great way of getting calories and protein, uh, vitamins, minerals, probiotics, all that good stuff in a convenient, easy to travel form. Really helpful for people who are trying to ditch some body fat maybe because you know exactly how many calories you're getting. Um, and, but effectively, when you, when you really get to the root of it, it's protein and it's carbohydrate, okay? And then they just put in a load of other nonsense to make it healthier, okay? Simple as that. But actually, is this really much different to the, the torque recovery that I showed you a minute ago? Mm, not really, a little slower to, uh, to absorb. And the recommended serving size is quite big because it's supposed to be a meal, so it's about 400 calories. But again, have less or have more, okay? You could absolutely use this after training and it'd be really effective because you've got protein, and carbohydrate. This is a bit of an unusual one as well. So it's a collagen um, supplement. And originally I first started using these and getting my athletes to use them post-injury. We're effectively getting collagen into the body to help give it what it needs to heal after a surgery, a wound, 
bone break, anything like that, okay? And I actually use it long term now. I just find it's really good for looking after my joints and things. And for me, I mean, this is unflavored. It's just a white powder. I also use this to increase the protein content of things like my porridge or my cereal in the morning. Or I can add it in with some of this. You know, you can make a cocktail. So I've got my meal replacement, but we've added collagen in there to give my body what it needs to, you know, support my joints. And it's also nice for like your hair, skin and nails and things like that as well. Keep you looking young. Let's talk now about the so-called post-training window. Uh, during this time, after you've been doing some hard exercise, it is the best time to take on protein and carbohydrate because your body is crying out for it. The muscle damage is fresh, you know, and you're really ready and willing to absorb anything that you take in and to use it to repair your body. And yes, it's true. If you take uh, some sort of recovery product within maybe 10 minutes to half an hour post-training in this window, then that's a really great time to optimize your recovery. What I will say though, is that you see a lot of people worrying too much about little details like that, and they don't have the basics tied down. If you're not getting your two grams of protein per kilo of body weight every day, then it doesn't matter when you have your recovery shake because you're not even achieving the basics. If you're not eating a variety of good quality proteins in your diet, as well as your, your like veggies and your fruit and drinking water and getting to bed on time, then drinking your protein shake at 20 minutes past the workout or 40 minutes past the workout doesn't matter. It's literally just icing on the cake. So you look, if you've been training, it makes sense. Have one ready to go. And once you finish training, relax, take some breaths, when the heart rate has come down and you're in a more relaxed state, now it's time to hit that shake. At the end of the day, it's really up to you. The most important thing is to get that total amount of protein in every day. And if you do that entirely from food, then brilliant. You don't ever need to use any of this. For most of us though, this offers convenience. Train before work, you can have a shake, a protein shake on the way to work or when you get to the office, okay? Similarly, you know, you're away uh, riding, you've driven an hour or two, you can have a shake in the van on the way home. Okay, so you start that recovery process. It can be confusing, okay, when you're looking to choose a product, especially with all the different marketing. But at the end of the day, they're in two categories. Number one is just straight protein, like this. It's just whey protein and then chocolate flavor. And number two, things like these two here, which are protein and carbs, and better suited to people who want to put on body mass or when you've burnt a lot of calories on a big ride or something like that. Finally, these things are ultra convenient, but they're going to work out expensive and you generate a lot of plastic waste if you're buying these from the supermarket all the time. Make sure you're getting the basics right, okay? This is all just icing on the cake. Find one that works for you, that tastes good, that you don't have to force down. And if it makes you fart really badly all the time, then it's probably not doing your digestion any good and you should try a different protein source or maybe a different brand. I'd really love to hear from you guys. You know, do you use the recovery shake after the gym or after riding? You know, let me know what you use and what your experiences are. Um, you know, personally, this is my go-to after the gym. This is my go-to after riding. And then from time to time, I'll use a product like this. I think it's really tasty as well. And it's as simple as that. So make sure if you haven't already that you're liking and subscribing. Uh, I'd love to hear about what you're using. Don't forget as well, that if you've got any questions, just drop them in the comments below and I promise I'm gonna get right back to you and I'll do my best to help you out.